It's good to be back. Okay, so again, we are, well, let's get a running start on page nine. So the Machaber says, Tovlomar Parshas Akeda, Parshas Hamon, Saras Adibros, Parshas Ha'ola, Mincha, Shlom, Mchatas, Ve'ashem. So he says, Tov, right? It's good to say the Parsha of the Akeda, where we uh, recount the Akeda Sitzchak. Um, uh, and the Mishaburah says you should say it before all the Karbonos, we'll see why. And you can also say the Akeda and Parsha Saman even on Shabbos. Um, then the Mishabura says something extremely important. Right by the little Chavches, the Sharetzion Chavches, so it's uh, about seven lines from the bottom. So he says it's not good enough just to, re- to read it. It ain't that bit Amira. Ella, she's bonen mashu omer. Rather, a person has to think about what he's saying when he says these parshas, v'yakir niflos Hashem. And he should recognize the wonders of Hashem. Why? What's the wonders of Hashem in, in, in the Akedah? So Chavaz Chaim explains, parshas Akedah, k'te lis kors kus avos b'chol yom. Because the parsha of the Akedah is uh, our way of, now again we say in Shemon Esrei, okay, Avraham, okay, you talk about but it's the same thing, is we want to rem- remem- we want to mention the schusim of the Avos every th- single day. So that's one thing. So we see the Mishnayas and Tamid talks about the, the order of the day in the Beis HaMikdash. So one of the things they, they did is they had to see if it was daybreak, because as we'll see in a moment, they couldn't do Carbonos at night. So how they know if it was daybreak, right? The clocks, you know, like uh, with the fancy charts that we have. Excuse me, and all those things. No. So rather, the Mishnah says they had one of the young Kohanim, Pirchei Kahuna, go up, uh, um, I don't know what you call it, a um, mast, this week's Parsha also, um, and he would look from afar and see, the, you know, because there's hills, as you all know, you know, Shalim, it blocks your view of when sunrise is. Because you can't see the sun, you know, it'll take, you'll wait till 12 o'clock in the afternoon until it's sunrise, right? So the, and they used to, um, and the guy on the bottom, the Mamuna, would scream up to him and say, Barka'i, Barka'i, did it, br- is it like Boker? It's very f- interesting, actually, that we're bringing this up. I didn't plan it this way. But just, uh, just today, I was in touch with a relative of my wife's who was uh, very close, has an in, uh, very close into Rukhain Kineski's design design, had an issue going on, and uh, needed Rukhain Kineski. So the, the guy agreed, to, uh, since he's rel- relative, sort of, agreed to take it to Rukhain Kineski did some things you know, to give him all the information. And his name is Barkai. I'm not kidding you. So I like that for Bashar. So again, so uh, after Barkai means the, the, the Mamuna would uh, say, is it daybreak yet? And the guy, uh, the young Cohen all the way up there, say yes. And then they would say, did the sun, Higia ad Chevron? Is it sunlight in Chevron? So and hopefully he would answer yes. Now the question is, why? Why do you need to know if it's, if the, you know, if it's also sunrise in Hebron? You know, we all, we go by Yerushalayim time, right? You know, like, a, so the uh, the answer is, Chazal say because to to be masked those who sleep who are resting in Hebron, to remember the Abba. So that's exactly this point, is to. Um, uh, mention the Avos before we get started. Now again, that's the same concept that we have at the beginning of Shemun Esrei too. Okay, Abraham, okay, Yitzchak, okay, Yaakov. Now the other reason for um, um, is also, there's another reason, also to remind us to subjugate, to squash, so to speak, to uh, subjugate. Rav Ruderman, I remember when we went, we had this close to talk to him about Moser and Slabotka. 
So one of the guys uh, mentioned about Shviras Hamidos, breaking Amida. And, and he held up his hand and said, we don't talk that way anymore. So we talk about being Machnia Amida, right? Holding it down, like, you know, subjecting it, but it's always still there. It's a very interesting um, moment. So to remember to subjugate your Yetzirah, Kamosher Masar Yitzchak Nafsho, because that's what Yitzchak did, right? You, you know, there's a lot of kashas on his father, right? He offering me as a human sacrifice, and it's a, a, few, a lot of kashas. But uh, he didn't uh, ask those kashas. He just did, you know. So the same thing with us. Imagine we have, we don't have those problems or those challenges, I should say. So kosher king, we should do whatever Hashem wants. And how about Parsha Saman? Parsha Saman kidi laham shiyamid. Uh, and uh, the, the reading, uh, saying the parshas, the parsha of the man, is to reinforce in our psyche that everything comes from Hashem. Right? Every, all uh, a person's livelihood is all hashkachal pratis. <clears throat> right? As I'll say, there's no such thing as any job that you could go into that for sure you'll make money. Right. Doesn't work that way. I remember my follower show him talking about a man, I think he knew, he was very wealthy. Which means he, my father probably didn't know him that well. But, uh, but anyways, um, <clears throat> so how did he make money? He opened an ice cream place. And this is a long, long time ago. And it happened to be, after he opened it, a movie theater opened right next door. So how do you explain it? You know, like... That's Ashkakha I mean, that's more clearly Ashkakha Pratis. But you see, you know, that's what, what's happening. That's what's happening. How do we know that from the man? Because, you know, in the man, it fell exactly right. If you had more people in the family, more man. Less people, less people. And, and no matter what you did, you couldn't finagle around it, right? You couldn't keep it, you couldn't freeze it, you couldn't, you know, you couldn't uh, put it in a Ziploc bag. And again, let's say you have uh, not so many people, so you leave some over, it, it went, right? It didn't work. A very powerful line by the Chovetz Chaim. And it's to teach us, the, saying the man is to remind us that the more work, the more he the more effort you put in, Again, it's a difficult line. We have a Messor about this uh, from our Yisrael Salanter, but be that as it may, about where the line is, how much Ishtadlos a person has to put in, how, where is the line for Ishtadlos and uh, Emuna and be talking in Hashem. But again, the reading of the Man is to teach us, is a very powerful line of the Chavetz Chaim. It says, working longer and harder does not help Meuma, zero, zilch, nothing. It doesn't help at all. So all these people work and work and work, right? Hashem decides on Rosh Hashanah. No matter how, Hashem doesn't sign on Rosh Hashanah based upon you working, right? So again, you have to put in your Ishtadlis. You can't just sit home and say till them all day. But, you know, you have to put in your Ishtadlis, but, you know, you have to realize. And that's why, now, again, so these concepts uh, slip on us. So therefore, the halacha is saying, it's a very powerful idea, what do you need? Constant reinforcement in these ideas. You most are nefesh for Torah mitzvahs to realize that uh, everything is hashkacha pratis, all your money is hashkacha pratis. Again, it's not so simple, so every day we have to reinforce it. Okay, so there's the keda, the man, aser dibros, and then karbanos. And then karbanos. So, um, <clears throat> Uh, as we left yesterday, we, this is what we did yesterday. So the question is, we don't do this, right? Uh, well, some of them we do. We do that. People do that. Keda, Keda's there, and uh, Ola, and the Mincha, and the Shlomim, and we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, but Parsha um, Samanet not Seres Adibros, not there, not not at that point in Davening. And in fact. Not even in, in neither of them are anywhere in davening. 
like uh, you point out, Mr. Magan pointed out yesterday, it is printed in the back of Sidurim after davening, but that is, uh, so to speak, uh, uh, as an optional uh, equipment. So it's not anything in the um, basic mandatory stuff of davening. So what happened? So therefore, the Rabbi says, "V'davka biyachid muter lomar aser satiros b'chol yom." Specifically, when we're talking about an individual, an individual can say that aser satiros every day. Aval aser from the next page, but it's aser lomram b'tzibur. You're not allowed to say the aser satiros b'tzibur, right? So, in other words. What the Rabbi is, uh, what the Machaber is talking about is, you know, you know, it's good to say that Sarah said Dibros. So it seems like the Machaber is saying at the beginning of davening, but we don't, uh, we don't do that. We do that, so, but that's specifically talking about an individual, but not a tzibur. So what's the problem? So the Mishabura says, if you look at Tezayin, the Chavetz Chaim says, but tzibur mivnei kofrim. What's wrong? Because we're worried if we have the Sarah said Dibros in the body of obligatory davening, tefillah, so then there's a problem of the kofrim, what's the heretics. Shiyomu, that they'll say, ain't Torah el right? There's only, right, aser sadibros, right? Because there's nothing else in davening that you have that's from the Torah, right? Okay, yeah, shmavet. But again, so they'll say, ah, because that's the, that's the, uh, that's the only Torah. So we know all Torah is in Aser Sadibros, but that's at a deeper level. So therefore, you don't uh, write it up, something specifically for the Tzibor. Um, then the Chavetz Chaim goes on to say, some people disagree, say it's not Aser to say but Tzibor, just to uh, put it between the Brachos, um, and so on and so forth. Um, but the way the mission Burr comes out is that you could say it privately, but you shouldn't say it as a tzibur. So you see, we don't do that, and that's why it's not in the davening, because we're worried about the kofrim, we'll say, you know, that, that's, all the other stuff is really not Torah, it's just, you know, just that Sarasa Did this actually happen with the I don't think they even believe in the Sarasa But do they have it to consider that they I don't know. Baruch Hashem, I don't know. Um, but uh, it, what's interesting is, if you think a little, so we have this issue of um, of a takana because of kofrim, of the aser sadivros. So there's a very interesting Shiloh. And that is, wait a minute, twice, three times a year, right? Three times a year, uh, Parshas Yisrael, Parshas Vachanan, and also on Shavuos, what do we lane? No, no, oh, well, so you got to lane it. That's not the problem. The problem is, what do we do before I said there service of zeros? I don't know. I haven't taken a poll, but I assume a lot of shuls do. What do they do? Everybody rise, right? So isn't that a problem? Because the covenant will say, well, the, uh, the rest of the lane, you're seated. All of a sudden, I said zeros, everybody up, right? So Tak, uh, this, this Shiloh was asked to Ramosha. Ramosha has a where is it? Orchaim Chayuk Dalad Simon Chaf Beis, and he says he says uh, it's not a problem because um, they don't uh, we don't have this problem of Kofrim saying it only be um, um, only Aser Sadiros. He does talk about uh, places that don't, and it's, so therefore that's where that came from. That certain shuls don't. I don't remember that. I recall in yeshiva they clapped. Uh, again, uh, my memory could be failing me, but I do remember, I think, standing up. Yeah, there's that's other, right. Also, there's also other places where they do clap. Like, don't right. Clap things also, not just that. No, but we see it specifically a problem. You see they were worried about the Aser Sadibras. Right? So in other words, you're saying, uh, as Yashir, you know, we stand up also. But that's out of Hoda. What about she, Right, so they discuss it there also. Believe it or not, there's a whole tumult because of this. But we see, those are very good points, but we see, but there was a bigger chash, 
the, uh, concerned by Asersa Dibros. That, you know, like, I mean, you see that, Lamaisa, you know, amongst the Goyim, didn't they have the, a few years ago, they had a, a, the Ten Commandments in Arkansas somewhere, and we went to the Supreme Court or something, right, in the, in the courthouse or something, I don't remember. Right, so that's what people, you know, Goyim, I don't know, I don't ask Goyim, really. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, there's a danger. So the Shaila is, would it be a danger uh, standing up? Excuse me for Aser Sadibros. So Ramosha says no, and that's why we still do it, you know. Okay, but again, that's a, an interesting extension that maybe we wouldn't have thought of. Uh, oh, yeah, but I also want to mention, Ramosha also says that if, let's say, you come from a shul that does not stand, and then it happens to be that you're davening in a shul that does stand, so you should stand. Right? In other words, you might say, well, we hold, you know, because this problem of the takana of uh, takana's kofrim, so we're really right, right? You know, so that, therefore you say seated. So as you can imagine, that is incorrect because you should always go like the minog of the place, wherever you are. Right, your own personal minute for the minute of the place. Um, yeah. Okay, which is a general rule, like I say very often. We do have the concept of a minute of so there is such a thing. But predominantly, what you see most of the time is uh, in, in halacha and in Mishnayas and all, all these type of things, like uh, talking about when to do, if you do malacha on Erev uh, Pesach, or you don't do malacha on it's minute makam, right? Uh, and so, for example, again, it doesn't apply anymore because there's, uh, unless you're going to Kiryas Yoyal or uh, some place like that, there's no Minagam Makam. So, uh, again, so, um, you know, we, people do different things, but certainly within a shul, you know, people should, whatever your personal Minagam is, nice, but, you know, you should conform to the Minagam Makam. Yeah. Where was the Shuvah? Orachayim Chalik Dalid Simon Chof Base. Sure, sure. Okay, so let's, uh, running out of time, but again, let's try to uh, forge forward. Maybe we can do it in 15 years instead of 16. Vav, Parshas HaKarbonos Lo Yomar El Abiyom, right? As we started off at the beginning of the year, the Parsha of the Karbonos, the Parshas of the Karbonos, right? All those. So some people say before Mizmoshir, Korbanos, like the Korbanos we mentioned before, you should say, you should only say them during the day, right? Because you can only bring a Korban during the day. So now again, this is a powerful idea. We don't appreciate that when we, when we say something, it's in the place of. It's in the place of a Korban. So we project the halachas of a Korban onto, um, onto what we say. So therefore, you shouldn't say these karbonos uh, during the nighttime. Now, again, this could be a problem if you go to a very early minion, like we had, hopefully we'll get back, and, you know, sometimes it was, uh, you know, you could still down Marav when people came. It was a few minutes before. So, uh, so again, you would not be able to say those things, all these karbonos, um, unless it's daylight. Unless it's day. I shouldn't say daylight. Now the Mishnah does bring down opinions that say that the ima ain lo p'nai you don't have time yochol omram gam parshas hakarmas v'layla. He brings down in some more lenient says you could still uh, say them uh, even at night, and then he brings down from the shlod that on Shabbos and Yantif there's yehi rotzons after a lot of these uh, you know the, all over the some people say it some people don't and uh, sorry um, but um, the Mishnah says that uh, if it's Shabbos or Yantif, so uh, you should not say the Hiratsons because a lot of these Karbanos, except for the Tamid, were in the Davos, right? The Ola or the Ash or the Shlomim or, you know, so on and so forth. They were all in the Dava. And you didn't bring a non obligatory, uh, well, um, a voluntary, but also a, a private Karban. On Shabbos, or you know, on Yantif, you brought a cor- private carbon, you know, all real. But uh, again, so therefore, again, our saying it is like bringing it, so therefore, you don't say that. Uh, just one uh, last thing, so I don't forget. 
and Rahman Salaam and Avel should not say uh, any of these um, the parshas of Karbanos. And why we'll talk about later, Blin Nether Mirtasha. Okay, Yashkoch everyone. Uh Mincha is in nine minutes.